Okay, welcome back. Roy and Nancy, this is the second part of the interview. And uh, we're going to dive into uh, marriage and uh, children. So, um, when and where did you meet and what drew you to each other? Mm. Oh, you found me and you fabulously courted me, didn't you? Let's see. <laughs> no. We just met through, because I didn't know you for a long time. In, in, in uh, I guess in 1955, or thereabouts, I was uh, involved with the uh, JCL. Southwest JACL. I was president of that particular group. And uh, I guess in 19... They also, they had annual conventions, not annual conventions. I guess they had conventions every two years or so. Who? The AJCL. Oh, then every year. I think it was every two years. The, the, no, big they had the one I went to in San Francisco was oh. was every two years, I think. And I was uh, the Southwest representative to go to that convention. Mm. And it was at that convention that I met her. The most joyous day in your life. Yeah, and uh, I was—I I guess I was about ready to get married back in those days, so I courted her. And uh, I had her. Oh, I just had a kid, though. The the, the problem was that she was uh, she was still married at the time. Uh, her husband wasn't around, but uh, she was still married. Never went through a divorce or anything like that. So had to force her to get a divorce, which she did by going to Reno. Back in those days, you could go to Reno and spend six weeks or something like that, and and be, and be divorced. So she had to go through that process. Pros pros the job of doing that, you know, and uh, she finally got it done in '57, near the late later part of '57, and we got married in '57, December '57. Gee, I'm glad you remembered because December. I don't. <laughs> what was the day I'm we got terrible. married? December twenty seventh or something like that. I have no. Idea. Well, we measure, we 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 celebrate it, but it's our kids that remind us when that date was. And she lived up in San Francisco. I lived in Los Angeles. So uh, after we got married, we moved down to Los Angeles and lived over in the west side of town. And it was from there that I moved over to the East San Diego Valley. But uh, let's see. She had the one daughter at that time, so I, I ended up you know, having a daughter when I got married. And uh, then we proceeded to have seven more? Six no, more. Six more. Yeah. What was the deciding factor for you two to move down to LA? That's where I lived. That's where he lived. And, and that's where I worked. Yeah. So. And and she was, she was working up there, but you know, it, it just auto it was kind of an automatic thing that uh, she would follow me. And Did I chase you? No. no. Oh. <laughs> no, my family all liked him too, so that was very easy. Well, he's a easy guy to learn to like. I was in the real estate business back in those yeah, days, that's right. and I had uh, purchased a a small home, you know, for us to live in. So that's another reason why we moved down here. What was originally the most difficult for you about getting married or being in a relationship, and what was the most satisfying? 
because he loved me. Uh, you know, let's see. 50. I got married in 57, so I was 27 at the time. Oh, you were that young? And, and uh, you know, when you get to a certain age, you start to wonder, gee, you know, time for me to settle down. Okay, but 27 is fairly old, you know, so I was thinking, man, you know, things are going on t pretty fast and uh, I'm still not uh, with any girl. Dated several girls, but no one seemed to be the right one until I met her. And, uh, and I overwhelmed you. So, you know, that that's I ended up courting her. And I used to fly up to San Francisco or drive up to San Francisco to court her. I can't remember what the airline was back. Nothing better to do, huh? No, there was an airline that had cheap flights to San Francisco. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. So there was that, that rationale at that time that uh, caused me to want to get married. And your and friends were all married. Found found somebody that uh, was a willing partner. So, but a lot of my friends back in those days were also, you know, my age or very close to my age, and they also wanted to get married. So they were all looking for girls all the time. What advice would you give someone today who is contemplating a serious relationship? Go for it. Hmm? Find somebody that you like and find somebody that likes you and then pop the question. Yeah, I don't know why. It takes, if it wasn't for the fact that we had to get, uh, she had to get a divorce in order to marry me, we might have been married earlier. But uh, you probably, at some point in time, if you have a relationship with a girl, pretty much have the feeling that, okay, it's, it's a good relationship and that you want to get married, you know. Yeah, she, she's not so bad. But it's kind of interesting that one of my sons is, uh, has a relationship but won't get married. Will not get married. <laughs> So when you raise kids, you know, you never know what's going to happen to them <laughs> or what, what characteristics they might retain and what the, they're going to reject. And yet children, uh, what were they like when they were young? And uh, were there certain things that you're worried that your children might have to go through that maybe something you went through? Well, no, not really, huh? We didn't worry about it. My concern at the time was that to, to make sure that they got along with their white friends. With who? White friends. Oh. And that they were not uh, discriminated against. But back in those days it, it didn't make a heck of a lot of sense to discriminate against them because they were Japs because at the time you know the war was over and uh, there was uh, less animosity much less <clears throat> but because they were different you know they were Asian and the people they were with with were white and uh, the people that were white a lot of them never met an Asian before so <clears throat> upbringing tried to get them to understand that situation so that they could get along. And I think most of them got along, although there were some instances when they had fights, uh, not because of their race, but uh, misunderstandings of one kind or another. Well, he comes from a small family and I come from a very large family. It made a bit difference too. Because just he and his sister, and he, I had all my brothers and sisters, and I mean, you know, I, we were a family of 11, so, right? Yeah. And uh, 
we were, we, were, we were talking about how the kids adapted to going to school, whether they had any problems. And Our kids. Uh, did what? How they adapted to going to school here. Oh, down here? Yeah. Or why did they have to adapt to go but, to... But my wife didn't work at the time. You know, she was a homebody. So she put up with all of the kids and uh, pretty much kept them in line. Mind. <laughs> but our kids got along with their friends in, in, in high school and you know from from grammar school all the way through high school and it wasn't until they got into college that they actually separated from all their friends but they all ended up being pretty good kids and uh, you know we used to go to church every Sunday come to the community center or various events. Yeah, hey, you were active that way. Did all your, of your children attend the same school? Yeah, they mostly attended the same school. They, they all attended the same grammar school. Which was? Uh, Badillo. Badillo Grammar School, I guess. Badillo. Yeah. Badillo was a, their first what, grade. What did they call them back then? Grammar schools? I, I don't really... I Primary don't. schools or something like that, you know, they, they and uh, the junior high that they went to was the same. High schools now, they had two high schools in that area, so oh, yeah, the, the older Oak kids graduated Oak. from Royal Oak and the younger kids graduated from Charter Oak. When did Mr. Oak um, tension from the war the residents of the tension. When did it? When did you realize that it stopped and it was starting to be calm in uh, San Gabriel? Well, when we moved into San Gabriel, I think I mentioned the fact that uh, Marvel Miata was one of the early ones to move into uh, the uh, San Gabriel Valley area, and she had a lot of difficulty moving into uh, the neighborhood. But we moved in quite a bit later. And uh, we didn't have any problem looking around at houses and finding a place to live. Well, you were a agent then, so I... No, no, no. Weren't you a real no, estate no, no. agent? No, I was not. Oh. No, I was working at Aerojet at the time. Oh, oh, that's right. So, you know... It was back back in the days that uh, I went to college in nineteen early late forties and late and early fifties. Can you remember? I didn't really have any kind of a problem with uh, prejudice back in those days. <clears throat> and I think all the all the people that I associated with at school. Uh, didn't seem to have any kind of a problem with me being an Asian. So the kids uh, pretty much, like I say, went to the same schools and though they were in different grades and had different friends, they uh, all managed to get through uh, the school system. Yeah, they they were never discriminated against our kids. I think there were some instances that they were, but well, you know, it might have been was just minor, minor ones. Thing, yeah. yeah, but uh, but they get, they got along good, I think. Yeah. Can you describe the house that? Your children grew up in, and what street? Well, we, it's a, it's the house that we currently live in right now. It's 302 North Darfield Avenue, Covina. And uh, let's see. Originally, it started out as a three-bedroom house, and then we added on to it and oh, that upper one. Yeah, and added on to it and made it a four. Four, but four or five bedroom house, and uh, we had the swimming pool. Had a swimming pool, but uh, 
and you know we've lived there for ever since 1963 and the kids pretty much all grew up in that house well they, they did grow up in that house <coughs> and it was from that house obviously that you know because we lived in the area that we joined the community center and all and I was president of this community center back in uh, the first one I can't remember the year, but <laughs> I spent two term, two two years, taking this place, and I, I was involved in the building of this gymnasium and everything. So you know, we spent a lot of time here. How did a house look like back in '73 compared to how it looks right now? Same. Not much different. Like I say, we added a you know uh, an addition that raised the, the picture. It, it, it was a second story that was added. And how were your neighbors like in '63 compared to what there is what there is right now? Well, back when we first moved in, we had uh, good relationships with all of the neighbors. I used to see them a lot. And as the years went by, different people started moving in. And, you know, there was a period of time when all of a sudden, you know, there were no more kids there. And uh, just adults. And uh, I guess because all of the other kids that moved, mo moved on, a lot of the older families decided to sell and move elsewhere. So there was a change in the neighborhood. And uh, today, I don't even know the name of the people that are across the street or next door, next door uh, except the one family that uh, moved in, the Chinese family that moved in, that we used to uh, you know, give food to and they used to bring food to us and all that sort of thing. But It was a big house in the neighborhood, you know, it was a house that was originally there. So what... Uh, yeah. Kind of a kind of a mansion-like house, you know, big big house. <clears throat> what was the ratio of demographic in '63 compared to what it is right now? Pretty much the same. In our tract home, there was maybe uh, one other Japanese family, and the homes. Let's see, 25 homes or so in the area. And all the other ones were white. Well, yeah, they were white. And then it changed a little bit, and there are some Mexicans there now. There's some Filipino there. Uh, maybe another Japanese family. And. Uh, but that's the, that's the extent of the change. Does your family have any heirlooms or objects of sentimental value? And what is the origin and how has it been passed down? Not really, yeah. I don't have anything, we don't have anything that's been passed down from our parents. Is that true? Yeah. We were pretty independent, huh? In that respect. Well, <laughs> parents didn't have anything to pass down. Yeah. Just our yeah, likes and dislikes. Really, there really, I, I don't think there is anything there. All of the uh, artwork that we have, we, we acquire ourselves. Uh, yeah, we didn't have too much trouble or anything, you know. What about family photos? Hmm? Family photos? Yeah, we have family photos. Uh, yeah. 
I never was much for taking pictures, so you know we don't have a heck of a lot of them. But uh, back in the days when the kids were growing up, we used to take pictures mm -hmm. of them. I have a couple of Japanese dolls like that, but that's just you know, from your mom and my no, mom. Not from my mom. Huh? Not from my mother. Your mom had one. No. You know? Well, my mom did, but we had my mom's side, on uh, my side. We had a lot of. We had a lot of things that we trinkets. Share. <clears throat> Do you have any old pictures, or what is the oldest picture that you have with um, you and your family, or even with your parents um, while you resided in the San Gabriel Valley? We have a family photo. Me? Oh, the one that's up on the wall. Oh. oh, oh. Uh, of all our kids, and uh, one of the one of the wives that one, one son married, and they're, I guess, Brennan's not in that picture, huh? Chandra is, I think. That's about it, and, and uh, what year is that? Let's see, we used to take a picture of a family every 10 years. We haven't taken one for a while now, so. This is 2016, 10 years ago it would have been 2006. So it must be in the, in the 2000 time frame, the last photo that we have. Do you have any pictures with you and your parents? I don't remember. Uh, well, they always lived, <coughs> my parents lived in San Francisco. So, I don't know. There used to be, we used to have, you know, I used to have pictures of with my, my folks while I was growing up. And uh, I don't have those photos right now. My sister has them, but uh, I don't have them. Can you tell me where the picture was taken and uh, what's going on in the picture? Yeah, it needs to be taken, for example, at the park. When we used to go to the park, he, he, he had a camera and he used to like to take pictures. Uh, or at uh, uh, Jebney School events or at church events. And. Uh, That kind of stuff. Do you recall what's going on in those pictures? Uh, no, I don't really recall. I can't. You can't even remember the pictures, except <laughs> to know they were my folks were there. And pictures were taken. What about you, Nancy? I don't know. I. I mean, we have a lot of pictures, but yeah. Uh, well, I have such a big family. He's only himself and his sister, but I have, you know, there's 11 kids in our my family. And so, I guess we're a lot closer, huh? Like mm -hmm. Daisy and Roz and my brother Don, my brother Marshall. But do you remember pictures? They also have family pictures, too. Yeah. And they used to, when, when there used to be weddings or funerals, things like that, the family would get together and they'd take family photos. Uh, we had uh, we had photos when we were married, and with there someplace around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, then even like yeah, her mother's funeral, they would get together and there would be family pictures that yeah. were taken there. And now our children are different, huh? Well, and our children have family you know, pictures. Have their own family pictures and yeah. stuff. So there are those things around. But maybe we should t take more interest in that. 
Well, the kids do that now because of Facebook and stuff like that. You know, but we we're not too involved in that kind of thing. Have you ever shared your experiences um, living in this area of San Gabriel Valley um, before and after the war? No, I never lived down here. I lived in San Francisco. No, and after the war, after you married me, you lived here. Huh? No. Uh, we just all the people that we mix with here, you know, are people that we've known for some time. But we don't share any kind of experiences. One of the things that, are, that typically is asked is, what camp were you in? If they're older people, you know. What about your children? Did you share any experience with them? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, one of our sons uh, has recorded uh, information like we're re recording today. And uh, he has it on file someplace, I don't know where, but uh, Todd, you know, set well, up. Well, Daniel has pictures too. Well, but Todd is the only one that's actually recorded mm. things that we've actually done and put a. He hasn't put any kind of a thing together for it, but uh, he did uh, do some recordings. And at some time, point in time, he would his intention was to put some kind of a file disc together. But we've never we've never shared anything with you know people other people than that. What has provided you the greatest satisfaction in life? Well, probably our marriage and the kids that we've had and the fact that they're all pretty good kids. No real bad ones yet. Yeah. That's probably the, the most important things in our life right now. How would you say the world has changed since you were young? Hmm? How would you say the world has changed since you were young? Oh. I think that uh, there's a lot more problems these days than it used to be. You know, my young, my young, young oldest daughter, when we lived out on the west side, uh, we lived on the, in the west side of L.A. It wasn't exactly a bad neighborhood or anything like that, but back in those days, early days, she would uh, get on a bus and go down to the Coliseum area, come back on the bus by herself, no problems. Today, you know, that might be kind of a problem, you know, you, you don't want little children to be running children old enough to get on the bus by themselves, you know, to run run neighborhood or run around the neighborhood on buses. So there's probably more I guess more difficulties now in conducting one's life with their children than there used to be. There's a lot of dissension these days. We didn't seem to have that much dissension back in the days when we were young. <clears throat> I think Congress, for example, was able to get things done today. It's a heck of a job now to get things done there. You know, the split between parties is pretty serious. Traffic has gotten worse and worse and worse, you know. And it'll probably get even worse, and I don't know that it'll ever improve. Times have changed a lot. Yeah, well, that's what he's asking about. What were the roads like when you were young? The roads that you traveled around with, on? Well, compared to how it is now? Not bad, you know, excepting that uh, the highways had maybe two lanes or four lanes. I used to go up. To my sister's place, my place up in the Santa Maria, 
and there used to be like two lane roads and three lane roads. Now it's all highway, you know. And uh, back in those days, you know, the roads were a lot narrower. Of course, you didn't go as fast, but uh, you had to be careful when you drove, especially with three lane roads. Freeways are much, much nicer now, but obviously crowded, so that it's not that enjoyable. Well, we don't travel too much on the roads anyway, not anymore. Well, you know, going to Vegas, for example, you had nice yeah. two-lane roads back, back then, and now, you know, you got nice big highways, but uh, there's construction going on all the time. And what car did you drive? What was your first car? First car that I drove was a uh, 1939 pickup that my father was using for his business. Business, And I think that's where, that's the car that I got my license in. It's also the car that I had my first accident in. But uh, since that 39 Chevy I've had uh, A 49 Chevy, I mean, I've the family's had a 49 Chevy, a 54 Chevy, gee. <laughs> Can't remember. <laughs> Pretty bad. You know, 56 Chevy, too? I don't know. We had one Buick, I had a 59 or 50, nine, no, 50. Must have been a '56 Buick because I used it to travel up to San Francisco. And, and I had I, a car. Huh? I had a car, didn't I? Oh yeah. We had we had more than one car in the family. Had uh, let's see, had a VW Bug, had a uh, station wagon, had a. Uh, we had to have a, station. a GMC van. When we used to go skiing, things like that, that would be pretty handy to, to put the skis in as well as to, uh, be able to tra tra handle a number of kids. Of course, back in those days now, we didn't have the seat belts that we had to tie the kids up into. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, when we would go to Disneyland back in those days, I had a uh, 67 Chevy wagon and the kids would just fall into the spaces between the back and the front seats and uh, no seat belts. Things were much easier back in those days. Today, my goodness, that's another big change. I guess all of the uh, people that are interested in preserving life, you know, insisted upon all these changes. Is nobody coming today? No. Huh? No, no. Oh. Yeah, see, here's a question for you. Um, what values did you try to raise your children with? And uh, how did you go about doing that? You better not get in trouble. No, my kids are pretty well behaved and they, they ran around with kids who were of the same well, I think one of the things that we tried to do was to get them to go to college, okay, and, uh, and some, they're ran, all good students. some didn't. Uh, we also tried to do things like, you know, get them to play music. Some the stuff was just not, some actually took lessons, but, you know, there, there are no musicians now. Uh, but later on in life, they kind of remembered or, or remembered that they didn't take anything like that and they wanted to because some of their friends were involved in it. So they've you know, taken up some stuff, but uh, not a lot. Uh, but, you know, like, I, like we said, you know, we went to church to try to have good church values instilled in them. 
and <laughs> none of the kids go to church now. <laughs> so, you know, that didn't work out to be that good, but I'm sure that they all remember We that. have one uh, grandson that goes to church. Good, good uh, commandments and things like that. And they're all, you know, good law-abiding citizens. Of course, I've got, you know, police in the family, you know, police people in the family. Yeah. We have a yeah. highway patrolman and a deputy sheriff in our family. And the daughter who's a deputy sheriff, too. Yeah. yeah how, so how was the form of discipline um, that was used on you by your parents differ than what you used for your kids? Uh, gee, I can't remember my folks ever spanking me or anything like that, but I did spank my kids. Mean, mean father. And that was probably the major form of discipline that I used. Uh, yeah, I mean, but we always talked to our kids, so they, yeah. they, they they pretty well behaved themselves because they knew they had to answer to him. And uh, but they, but luckily for us, they turned out pretty nice, huh? Yeah, you know they didn't. Uh, although we smoked back in the Old up day. until 1963, none of my kids ended up smoking. Huh? That's they true. did end up drinking but uh, <laughs> which is worse but you know they don't they don't drink a heck of a lot except for maybe one of them uh, or two of them but w we never drank a heck of a lot although we did drink yeah we didn't really drink I don't drink now I haven't drunk in a long long time but uh, no wonder I don't have fun yeah Hmm? You're a killjoy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you see as the most valuable um, about your last name? About the last name? Well, uh, Ikatani happens to be a kind of an unusual name. There aren't too many Ikatanis around. I don't even know of another Ikitani family. Well, there are some around. My my kids have actually tried to research on the internet, and they did find, you know, a couple of them, and no relations, it turns out. But, uh, and, and they all use that name, so, you know, because it is kind of unusual, you know, you're, you get to a place where, like, we went to the hospital not too long ago, and the receptionist at the hospital says, are you really to the dog? Says, yeah, he's our son. And it turns out that, you know, because of the name, they were able to associate it with somebody that they knew. But there's nothing unusual about the name. You know, it's just, Ikatani happens to be a kind of a rarer, rarer name. It's not the rarest name, but it's not not too many have it. People have it. We don't have anybody who know, has that same name, do we? Well, there were some around at the time. Oh. <clears throat> My name was like Smith and Jones. Yeah, her her maiden name, Ueda, is fairly common. <clears throat> Do y'all have any uh, last last words or any questions for me before I go? No. No. Uh, no. I'm glad you're doing this. Uh, I hope we've been some help. You know, because you don't you didn't ask us very many <laughs> questions of, that we could have, that that we should answer. <laughs> But, uh, no, it was very nice knowing that you're doing this, but uh, it was no chore. And uh, I guess in a way it was nice because you helped us think that 
there was some other people who were interested in what we do and what what we don't do and uh, and luckily we've had a pretty good life and our kids have turned out quite well and uh, they have they're they're responsible huh and uh, I think I used to talk back to my parents more than any of my kids ever <laughs> talked back to me. But we always knew at my house, before I got married, that we always remembered Papa. We had to remind Papa and Mama. But then uh, you, had to, you had to know you were a good Christian except some of my sisters are Buddhists, and uh, other than that, no problems, huh? No, we got pretty good kids, we're very lucky. No, yeah, I, th I think that uh, re recording stuff like this is probably pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, how much interest other people have in listening to stuff like this, but you know, it's it's a good uh, job to do, and it forces you to have to come up with questions and stuff like that. You know, I think it's a good job for interns. All right, thank you so much for your time, Roy and Nancy. <laughs> uh, this is the end of the interview. No. Hope you had a good time sharing your story. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. We did. All right.